Rusya ila zina salakaya chaksu militam yena tasmai shri guru namaha ma om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya utale shri mati bhakti vedanta swami uti namine Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gauravai Pacharine, Nir Vishesha Sunyavari, Paschatya De Satarine, Anchakalpa Taru Vishya, Kripa Sindhu, Pei Vajra, Titanam, Bhavane Bhyo, Vaishnave Bhyo, Namaho Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Ramari Murti Sukulani, Mainatish Tanana Vatara, Akaram, Bhuvanesha Kinchu. Krishna Swayam Samapavat Paramam Bamanyo Govindamari Purusham Tamaham Bhajani Govindamari Purusham Tamaham Bhajani we're speaking about the uh, Ramayan here. And we gave a little introduction of the Ramayan. This verse I chanted. This verse, Ramari Murti Shukalani Amena Tishtanana Vatara Karo Bhuvanesha Kintu Krishna Swayam Samabhavad Paramam Paman Yo Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Vajami Verse number 39 of chapter 5 from the Brahma Samhita. This verse describes Ramachandra as Ramadi, not only Ram, but there are many other incarnations. They are compared to the waves of the rivers as the waves of the rivers and the ocean cannot be counted. So in the same way, it's not possible to count even the principal incarnations of the Lord or to speak of all of them. We talked a little bit about the appearance of Ram and uh, how it all came about with the puja done by Rishishringa, like that. Ram appeared during the Treta Yuga, which is about you know, two million years ago. Today we'll speak about one little not little, but very essential pastime within the Ramayan, which kind of unfolds the whole plot scenario in the Ramayan. And that is the intrigue that was developed prior to the banishment of Sri Ram to the forest. This uh, intrigue gives us a little insight of the importance of and the cautionary aspect of association. Importance of, in terms of that association, 
that is inspiring in our spiritual life that we can accept and move on, move forward in any area of our life. Association is with like-minded people or people who have the same goal in mind, either a short-term goal or in this case, devotee association, which means we're all looking forward to moving forward on the path back home, back to Godhead. The cautionary aspect of association is not to accept that association, which can be detrimental either to your physical well being, emotional well being, or, and most important, spiritual well being. The power of association, sometimes we hear, and this is a quote. It's kind of a general principle that tell me who you associate with and I'll tell you who you are. So we pick up and become influenced and also influence others by the power of association. So when Prabhupada, Swai Prabhupada emphasized how important association was in developing our Krishna consciousness. And he made that a principle of discussion as being the foremost of all importance, where through association, we chant through association, we discuss Krishna and the philosophy of bhakti. Through association, we learn how to perform our devotional service. We also learn what to avoid in Krishna consciousness. We can, association is, is from all angles of vision, that positive association is what we aspire for. And association is part of our existence because by the nature of association, we become happy. And when we're lacking association, we feel sometimes unhappy. Um, we have the example of how Ram had, uh, I'm sorry, Dasara had three wives, Sumitra, Koshalya, and Kaikeyi. Out of the three, Kaikeyi was the youngest of all, and it was also the favorite wife of Dasara. And so he would regularly come to visit Kaikei practically every day at a certain time in the evening. He would meet Kaikei. Kaikei was such an important part of Dasarat's existence that at one time when Dasarat was on the battlefield, uh, Kaikei was, happened to be there also. Uh, uh, he, he was wounded in battle and uh, she took him and treated him nicely, healed his wounds, and then he was able to return to the fight. Um, because of what that service she had done so expertly and so lovingly, he granted her two benedictions. And he said, because of your wonderful service and your love for me, I want to give you two benedictions. You can ask from me anything you want. Two things. She said, my dear husband, I will accept those benedictions, those boons at a different time. So she didn't take him immediately, but she kept him in her mind. So the, the story plays out where now it's the time for the coronation of Ram on the throne. The entire city consisting of hundreds and thousands of citizens all 
looking forward in a very joyful way to the new king who will now rule Ayodhya. Dasarat wants to retire. He's getting old. He finds out of his four sons, Ram is the most qualified. Sutragna, Bart, and, and Lakshman, they all agree that Ram will be the next king. There was no envy amongst the four brothers. They were the well-wishers of each other. Sometimes you see in a family, there is some enviousness amongst sisters or amongst brothers for whatever reason. Sometimes the parents favor one of the children over the other and then the other child becomes unhappy or envious. But this was not the case at all. They all were so together supporting the idea, yes, not only do we want Ram, but he is the most qualified of all of us to accept the throne of our father. So the entire city had prepared for days and days with great festivals. And it was all leading up to the coronation day, which was the following day. Now something happens. There's always, Maya is always there. <laughs> When in fact, in spiritual life, when anytime you're trying to do something that has something significant about it, in other words, a great move forward in spiritual life, you can expect that Maya will come with some obstacle, challenge, something that may cause one to uh, have to divert their attention away from the situation in order to deal with the attack of Maya. So in this case, it was uh, something quite unexpected. Kaikei was in her chamber along and uh, she had each of the, the wives had maid servants who would, who would assist them in whatever way they needed assistance. And so there was one maid servant of Kaikei, her name was Mantara. Mantara was a hunchback and she was uh, Kaikei's assistant. Now Mantara, when she heard that uh, the son of Koshalya, Ram, would be the next king, she became unhappy and her unhappiness turned into very strong sense of envy. In the, in the scriptures it's mentioned, Prabhupada also mentions it in his lectures, that out of all the qualities such as lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, Envy is the worst, because within envy, it contains all of the other bad qualities, along with the monarch of all demoniac qualities is enviousness. The living entity falls from the material world because they are envious of Krishna, and the whole material world is always in competition on different levels, family members, friends, societies, communities, nations are at odds with each other because there's this element of enviousness. Mm -hmm. So just like in the world, if one nation is greater than the others, they may fear that nation along with, and they may also show some respect, but that respect is really based on the principle of fear. And therefore, behind the scenes, envy exists. So Mantara, she uh, approached Kaikei. She said, Kaikei, do you, do you know what is happening? 
Do you understand what is about to take place? Are you uh, so foolish that you cannot see what will happen? Kaike said, Mantara, what are you speaking? You don't know, but tomorrow Ram will be coronated and therefore your son Bart will be in a lesser position and you, especially you, will no longer be the favored queen of uh, Dasarat. He will favor Koshalya over for you and you will be marginalized. You will be neglected. You may even be mistreated. Kaike said, what are you speaking about, Mandara? Everyone loves Ram. I love Ram. I'm, in fact, I love Ram just as much, even more than my own son, Bart. He is such a jewel of a personality with all good qualities, always seeking the welfare of others, qualified in so many ways, a true leader of, a, of, of the world. And she went on to glorify Ram, but, but Mantar kept saying, you don't understand. Don't you know when Ram will take the throne, what will happen? He will imprison you because, because he knows, Ram knows that Bart is more qualified to take the throne. And he will see Bart as his competitor and as his enemy. And he will take Bart and place him in jail. He may even also decide to kill him. So Bart will be not an obstacle to his rule. Kankaike is listening to all this poison that's coming from her maidservant, Mantara. She's not agreeing with it, but she can't think of what else to say. She's confused. And then Mantara goes on speaking even more. And then Dasarat, Dasarat will neglect you. He won't even see you. His favorite queen will be Koshalia. He'll give all the time to Koshalia now that Ram is on the throne. And you will be not even noticed. <laughs> so she went into this diatribe of criticism of Ram and of, of Dasara speaking about this imaginary plot that she had created in her own mind <clears throat> and trying to convince Kaikei after she spoke for such a long time speaking. And Kaikei was listening. Because she was listening, she was affected. It's interesting to note because when you listen to criticisms of others, even if you don't believe it, you become affected. You become affected in two ways. One is you're, you feel unhappy. And two, you even start to subtly think that there is some truth to what you are hearing. And that could also lead to you feeling the same way in the future. To listen to criticism is like taking poison willingly. Could especially criticism of another devotee. So Kaikei is listening and Mantara is going on. And then Kaikei tried in so many ways to counter some of the arguments. But Mantara was, had planned her, her plot very nicely and she was able to speak in opposition to everything Kaikei said. See, 
what Manthara really was saying is that if Ram becomes the king, then you, Kaikei, will be in a lesser position. And what will happen to me, I will not get the same benefits that I'm getting now. So Kaikei, uh, Mantara was speaking this way because she was thinking of her own vested interests. So she continues, finally, she says, Kaikei be actually becomes defeated and convinced. And she says, Mantara, what should we do? Well, do you remember those two boons that Dasarat gave you? Yes. Now is the time to ask him. Say that you want one, you want to have Bart installed on the throne and you want Ram to be banished to the forest for 14 years. Like he was shocked. She could understand, yes, Bart on the throne, but why banned Ram to the forest for 14 years? And Kaikei said, if, ba if Ram is still here, he will gather armies and he will try to attack Bart. And that will, and then there will be a lot of unnecessary fighting and killing. Better to ban him to the forest for 14 years. Why 14 years? What does the number 14 really mean? It's interesting because it is called, I'm sure we also heard within the present day, there's a thing called statute of limitations, where a person's rights are no longer entitled to a particular fortune, crime, or anything legal after 14 years. So in the age of um, Treta Yuga, the legal statue, statue of limitations was 14 years, then Ram could not come back after 14 years and claim the throne. So we hear that the Pandavas, well, they were also banished to the forest for 13 years. So in the Dwapara Yuga, the statute of limitations was 13 years. And now in Kali Yuga, the statute of limitation is 12 years. So entitlements are no longer valid after those periods of time. Just to give you a little side point here. So finally, Kaikei said, what should we do? Call Dasara and tell him what you have decided. Now, Kaikei is sufficiently uh, what we say converted, bad association, listening with a submissiveness to criticism. Which which suite did you put in there? Okay. Okay. That's fine. There's one bow you're using that should not be used. That's the one. Which one? That one. Uh, let's see. Let me see which one. No, it's, it's not here this time. It might be there. I can't see it. But anyway, you're okay now. You got it from that one tray, right? Yeah, just from this. I yeah. don't take it from yeah. beauty. Yeah, not the other one. No, no, no. no. Okay, because I had to move that bowl out. Uh, sorry about the interruption here. I'm just trying to manage the deity worship that's going on here too. Uh, okay, so now Gaike 
is convinced that what Mantara is saying is actually the truth. Now, Bar is away. He went out traveling, and so he's not there at the present time. No. And he was ready to come back for the, the coronation tomorrow. But this happened the, day, the evening before. And so now, Dasarad comes to the chambers of, uh, of um, Kaikei, and she's no longer there in her room. He can't find her. Now there's a place called the sulking chamber. The sulking chamber is that if someone wants to lament or make a, a show of unhappiness, they go into this particular chamber and it's called the sulking chamber. So when Dasarat learned that Kaikei was in the sulking chamber, he was shocked. Why is she doing that? The whole world, the whole Ayodhya is so happy. Everyone is joyful tomorrow, the coronation of Ram on the throne. And so he finds his favorite and youngest of all queens in the sulking chamber, and she's lying on the floor. She's no longer dressed in her, her uh, gorgeous, gorgeous gown with jewelry. She's in a simple cloth and she's in a very lamentable mood. Dasara comes in and he says, what are you doing here? Don't you know? Know what? Tomorrow Ram will become the king. Yes, everyone, yes, everyone knows that. It's wonderful. And then she says, do you remember many years ago when I saved your life, you gave me two boons? He said, yes, I want to take those boons now. Sure, you may ask whatever you want. And then she hit him with, with practically a mountain fell on the top of Dasarat's head. She said, I want my son, Bart, to be the king. Dasarad was shaken by this. Why? You love Ram just as much as you love your son, even more. We've seen that, how you, how you showed you so much affection and attention to Ram. Dasarad was a little, didn't know what to say, but he said, if that is your wish, And then she said, and my second boon, what is that? Ban Ram to the forest for 14 years. What? He couldn't believe it. His favorite queen who was so loyal and loving. Now she's speaking like some, someone he doesn't even know. And she's just saying, why banish Ram to the forest, because Ram, when Bark becomes the king, there will be so much contention and there might even be warfare. Better to take, better bring Ram to the forest. Oh, I cannot allow that. What has happened to you? Why are you speaking like this? Why, what is it? And fine, he's, he's, he's lamenting or he's, he's frustrated trying to figure out why she's like that, but she's determined. She has become fully converted by the poison of her maidservant. And then Ram is begging her, please don't ask for the, that second boon. I'll make, I'll make Bart the king. Ram will, be, Ram will also be happy if Bart is the king. But sending Ram to the forest, that if she was determined and she didn't, she didn't give in to anything he said. He turned into a pitiable, he hears his powerful monarch 
who is one of the best fighters in the history of Kshatriyas, he turns into a complete uh, jellyfish. <laughs> Not a jellyfish, but someone who has completely like a little kid who cannot even control himself. He's overwhelmed with confusion, fear, anxiety, and lamentation, and doubt. Finally, she said, you are a Kshatriya. You have given your word to give me those two boons. If you don't give your, if you don't follow through with the word, you'll be criticized. And for a Kshatriya to say one something, a true Kshatriya that is, today we don't find too many true Kshatriyas. <laughs> To, to speak like, to, to make a promise and to not fulfill that promise is worse than death for a Kshatriya. His word becomes his life. And it is understood according to religious codes. So therefore she found many ways to find fault with him if he failed to give his word. Well, this went on. And of course, gradually everybody came to know about the situation. And then of course, Ram, when Ram was informed, Ram said, my dear father, if you want Bart to become the king, and that is my wish also. And if you want me to go to the forest for 14 years, whatever you say. But then when everybody heard, oh, what is happening? Ram is not going to be the king. Bart wasn't there at the time. The coronation was scheduled later and Rob Bart had not appeared. <clears throat> and so this went on. And finally, Ram said, I'm, I'm happy to go to the forest. And when Lakshman, he found out, he said, if Ram goes to the forest, I will not stay in Ayodhya. I will, I will go to a forest with him and together I, I will protect him from every, all the dangers in the forest. And then when Sita found out, oh, that my dear husband, he's going to the forest. How can I stay in Ayodhya and live without my husband? It's not possible. And she came, she said, I want to go with you. Ram said, not possible. The forest is cold. The forest is full of dangerous rakshashas. How will you live? How will you eat? You have to sleep on these cold ground. There are also ferocious and wild animals. The forest is not a place for a queen like you. I cannot allow it. In so many ways, he spoke, trying to discourage her. But then finally, as a dutiful wife, she said, my dear husband, the forest with you is Iodia, and Iodia without you is the forest. Ram understood her heart and knew that she would not live if he left her. So he agreed and the three of them prepared. But he knew it would be very difficult for her to be in the forest. She was accustomed to royalty. She was accustomed to all the comforts that come by way of royalty. But he accepted, and the three of them, of course, left for the forest. When Bart returned and found out what had happened, 
And he realized that his mother was the source of what had happened. First, when she saw him, she said, my dear son, did you hear the good news? You're going to be king. He said, what? Where, what are you getting? What are you speaking? Ram is going to be king. No, no. I wanted you to be king. So I used the benedictions that he gave me. And I said that he, that you should be king and he should go to the forest for four. And he, when he heard his mother speaking like that, he became angry. He started chastising his mother. What are you speaking? What have you done? You're trying to destroy the whole dynasty. And of course, Dasara was on the verge of death, losing the, the association of his son. And at the same time, lamenting that, you know, uh, his queen had become a demon. <laughs> she was acting like a demon. Again, it was the bad, the power of wrong or bad association. Always take heed because your opinions, your values, and your life itself can also be altered by the wrong association. So we should always keep clear of that association that will bring us bring us away from Krishna consciousness or that association that finds fault with others. That type of association is worse than death. And so when Bart heard that, of course, then it was understood that Kaikeyi was influenced by Mantara. When Satruna heard it, the other brother, he came in and he grabbed Mantara and started to drag her all over the floor. Here's this powerful Kshatriya dragging this old hunchback lady all over the floor. She's screaming. Finally, Bard said, don't, better not to, you know, kill her. You know, it'll be a great sin. So he stopped, but she was roughed up quite heavily by some truth. Now, everyone understood it was Mantara's influence that such a wonderful and loving queen who had so much affection for Ram and for her husband, Dasarat, became the opposite. And this was the intrigue that started the whole banishment where Ram spent 14 years in the forest and the unfolding of the entire plot of the Ramayan. So I'll stop there and we'll open it up to questions. The main topic here is the power of association and the element of envy, which can change a good person into the to, into the complete opposite. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, um, for this enlightening class. Um, thank you so much. It's very helpful to know about uh, more about association and uh, and uh, I will take advantage of this now. The Ramayana teaches us so many things that we can use and we can learn in our practice of Krishna consciousness. I request devotees if they have any questions or comments or realizations, uh, they can go ahead, please. Yes, Prabhuji, Raj Prabhuji, you can unmute and talk. Uh, hi, Krishna Maharaj. Thank you for that wonderful class. I feel actually like I have like millions of questions that are popping up in my mind. It started from things like uh, you said that Ram allowed Sita to come with him because he knew that she couldn't live without him. 
Of course, he allowed Lakshman to come with him, but they weren't the only ones that wanted to come with him. It seemed like everybody wanted to come with him. So I feel there must be more reasons why he particularly allowed Lakshman and Sita to come. Mm -hmm. Well, when the citizens found out, Ram had already been gone. And so Sumantra was driving the chariot of Ram. And the citizens, they all got together and said, we don't want to stay in Iodia without Ram. So they, they all got together and followed Ram into the forest. But Ram didn't want them to come. In fact, when at one point up with Ram, and then that one night he was with everybody in the forest, and then in the middle of the night, uh, Ram, Sita, and Lakshman got on the chariot of Sumantra, and he told Sumantra, you drive away, and uh, you make a path where they can't follow. And so they left in the middle of the night and when the citizens woke up the next morning, Ram was already gone because he didn't want all the citizens to come because he wanted the kingdom to go on the way it was. He, a place, the forest was not a place to rule the kingdom. Yeah, but Lakshman, he didn't have any trouble allowing Lakshman to come. Lakshman was his dedicated brother and they were so close. And everything they did as he grew up were close. So it was natural that Lakshman would go with him. But he knew that if he didn't allow Sita to come, she wouldn't be able to live without him. And so he allowed her to come. <laughs> Of course, it also says in one of the messages of the Ramayan, never take your wife to the forest. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the forest is not a place to bring your wife or any lady. So yeah, so Ram tricked the citizens and he got away from them. And then they, they tried to follow with Sumantra. He drove the chariot crisscross and left chariot wheels in different directions and no one could figure out which way they went. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, were you one of the citizens that wanted to follow? If I was there, I think I think we all would have wanted to follow. <laughs> I, I, I have to agree with you. <laughs> yeah. That's how they all fed, felt. They felt, well, we don't want to stay in Iodia anymore. Let Bart rule by himself. <laughs> we, we're going to, we want to be with Ram. But Ram knew that wasn't the best thing. <laughs> He wanted the kingdom to go on. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please Hare accept Hare. my please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Yeah, ho. Maharaj, uh, thank you. I think you raised a very, very fundamental point about association uh, with mantra and, uh, and the tendency to find faults, Maharaj. What is the root cause of the mind trying to find faults with others? What is the root cause and how do we is there any remedy for it, any practical applications through which we can try to overcome that tendency? 
the root cause is envy and the, which causes dissatisfaction. When dissatisfaction becomes strong, then one wants to uh, express that dissatisfaction towards the object that they are dissatisfied with. Whether it's right or not has nothing to do with it. The example would be given if, uh, just say, I, I've, this, is a, this is a real life case. Let me give you an example. In one workplace, perhaps you can identify with this. There was one uh, particular uh, worker who was really a great worker. He was excelling all of, amongst all of his co-workers. And he was getting a lot of praise. He was getting recommendations. He was getting raises. And uh, the other workers actually started to become envious, a few of them. So what they would do is in their dissatisfaction to seeing him getting all the benefits of his work, they, uh, they plotted against him. And so they would um, go into his office when he was not there and uh, sabotage his computer or do other things to the material that he, uh, that he had uh, gathered. And uh, in this way, they tried to tear him down that way. Finally, it was found out what, what was going on. So this was an example of how envious in the workplace when some, some other fellow worker is actually, uh, actually excelling in his activities. So envy goes on in the material world all the time. Even in devotee circles, we find that it can be very strong. Not only just there, it can be strong too. And it's also gross and it's also subtle. There are those who are not envious on the gross level, but subtly when something happens, their envious nature will appear and they'll feel unhappy, dissatisfied. So what is the root cause? Or what is the antidote for that? Well, in devotional circles, the, the, there's two principles. There's one for an individual and there's one for activity. The individual is to appreciate and um, be satisfied whatever Krishna has given you. Krishna has given everyone something. So see all the boons, qualities, or whatever else Krishna has given us and appreciate that and be satisfied with that. We can always strive to increase, but we should always be satisfied on the level we are. Not that we are dis, we, we can be dissatisfied in the sense that we want to in, increase the quality of our life in different areas of spiritual life, such as in our service or in the qualities that we are practicing. But we should never use our the, the sense of dissatisfaction as an object to cause harm or to others. The other way is if you if one is feeling envious towards another person, then serve that person. And take an opportunity to do some kind of service, look for something you can do. And it could be a, something small like giving a gift or, you know, if we want, if we have a, a desire to serve, Krishna will always inspire us with ideas on how we can serve. Um, that's that's the active way, but learn how to become satisfied. <laughs> Krishna is giving me so much. Why should I look towards other thing, other people, and, and be unhappy because I don't have that or they have that? Either one. <laughs> Envy takes out two two sides. I don't have that, and therefore I want it, or. I don't have that and I'll never get it. And I'll feel, uh, then that is called jealousy. Jealousy and envy are the same thing, but jealousy means turning that negativity towards oneself. Envy means turning that negativity outward. 
So I'm jealous because I'm not as good as you are <laughs> to use a, a phrase. And therefore I'll never be as good. And therefore I feel like, you know, what do they call that low self-esteem, unhappy about my situation. But a person who is a little bit sensitive will see, oh, Krishna's given me so much. He's given me this, he's given me that, he's given me this. And the more we look in those areas, the more we see what Krishna is doing. And we can always build our life based on whatever we have instead of, you know, looking outward and feeling unhappy about what we don't have. <laughs> But I'll give you a nice definition that may be something you can really think about. So what is envy? Well, we understand that whatever a person has, whatever a person is, is coming from Krishna, right? Can we accept that? Ultimately, Krishna is the supplier, provider, maintainer of everyone. So I'm unhappy about what this person has or is. So my problem is not so much with that person. My problem is with Krishna. Because Krishna has made that person what they are. And therefore, I don't like the idea of what Krishna has done. So my problem is with Krishna, not, not so much with that person. So if you think about it in that sense, our envy comes back when we're envious of others. It's a subtle envy towards Krishna also. I think, Maharaj, that's a very, very profound way of looking at it uh, and understanding. I mean, I mean, we are in the material world because we are envious of Krishna. But I think if when we, when we take our envious mentality or thoughts towards a person with that thought, uh, I think it helps. This is wonderful. A lot, yeah. We don't, we always want to keep a loving relationship with Krishna. So, but, but everybody is Krishna's part and parcel. I can't take credit for that, that statement. That statement was made by Radhanath Maharaj. So I got that from him. <laughs> just in case, don't give me credit for that. I'm just repeating. But what, if you think about what he said, <clears throat> It's actually quite powerful. <laughs> but Prabhupada, <clears throat> Prabhupada did say, <clears throat> excuse me, Prabhupada did say that the difference between material and spiritual is the difference between envious and non envious. He said, if you're non envious, you're in the spiritual world. If you're envious, you're in the material world. And that's a direct quote from Prabhupada. <clears throat> We may have experiences of feeling envy at certain times, but if we check that with our intelligence and dismiss it as being something that is a feature of Maya, then we can go on in our Krishna consciousness. But if we actually identify with those feelings and give them fuel by thinking about them, then and then we move into that area of polluting our consciousness more and more. So as soon as you feel like that, just immediately dismiss it. It's Maya, it has nothing to do with reality. So. Uh, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the qualities of a, a non-envious person is that when another person is happy, that person experiences happiness also. In other words, when you see another person happy, you become happy. That's a quality of non-enviousness. Mm -hmm. And it's not limited to, to family members. Mm -hmm. And friends, it should be, it, it's meant for all living entities. I think, Mahara, the other thing that you said is also quite um, profound, but very, very difficult to implement is serve that person. 
with that mood looking to do something for that person that's, that's not hard you can always think of something you know it's it's the antidote for for that mood yes we have to come out of that comfort zone in the mind and ring fencing it so no thank you mara this has been very useful and i think you know what you also said is using our intelligence when these thoughts comes because when i was reading the ramayan <clears throat> few months back and how kai kai lost her intelligence her good intelligence and her complete sense of discrimination was lost uh, and this can be found when she is glorifying mantra and that glorification is quite humorous because she glorifies to a very extreme end but from that we can get an idea of to what level her discrimination was lost and her intelligence was polluted through that association yeah, yeah mantara was completely self interested she simply was thinking if kaikey son if if Ra, if koshaya's son becomes the king my queen will be relegated to a lower position and that that means i will not get the benefits i'm getting that was her motivation it was all self so thank you mara you can see how en envy creates something that doesn't even exist just by that thought the mind starts to formulate in a, in a different way and it even comes up with these imagined scenarios that don't even exist both about the situation and about the person also thank you maharaj thank you for the guidance okay i'll try to implement points thank you so much my base <laughs> the ramayana is has is full of very powerful and very relevant spiritual messages thank you so much he looks at my humble obeisance he's our glorious to shri rupa Um, I would like to ask a question. Uh, yeah, can you? Can, we're asking the devotees that ask questions to turn on their videos. Unless, unless it's not possible. If it's not possible, we do. Okay. Thank you. Um, I would like to ask a question um, concerning uh, this situation of Kaike being. Uh, exposed to this criticism that um by Expo one kk exposed to hearing the criticism okay. that by one get to this situation um helplessly being exposed to a criticism and then um no excuse no escape no nothing just standing there and can't leave and it it might get us some uh, message but still um some anger arises and um, you have to tolerate it and it's it's very difficult and sometimes you, we can't leave the place and we can't do anything just um, listen and um mantaro mantaro was expert <laughs> and how to she was how she administered the poison kai kai tried to argue against mantara's statements but every time she said something mantara had a response that would defeat or seemingly defeat kai kai so after kai kai would could no longer respond and she played on her sentiments that you know she said um uh, and she also said one thing she said that uh when if ram takes the throne he, he will uh 
when Bart comes back from his trip, he will know that Bart is more qualified and therefore he will do, do harm against Bart. She made up this, this idea. So she was looking to really hit Kaikei where it hurts. And she did it. Kaikei was not easily convinced at first, but the problem with Kaikei is that she stayed there and listened more and more. She should have immediately just dismissed it and got away from that situation and told her maidservant, you know, leave, get out of here, don't come back. But she didn't. So that was her, we might say her mistake. What a reaction um, one gets um, behaving as Montara did. Uh, why didn't she, or why wasn't she um, expelled to another forest or something? I mean, I, I understand why it was not uh, possible to kill her because it was uh, not um, a feature of um, uh, no. Um, but no. Well, Citrugna got a little heavy with her. Lakshman also was yelling at her also, mm -hmm. both of them. But Citrugna really, he got really upset. He started dragging her along the floor and she was screaming. But then I, I forgot somebody stopped him. I think it was Bart. And of course, and to kill a woman is a, is a great offense, no matter how wrong. It says a woman should never be punished for her misdeeds. She should be corrected, but not punished. That's also Vedic culture. Mm -hmm. So that is a big teaching of this side of, yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is a big teaching also that, yeah, however bad one gets, um, and it's a woman, they are not, because I see these in this um, reality also. I mean, it's uh, impossible how um, Matajis can deal with each other sometimes, but still, um, it's a very uh, delicate issue to to yeah. deliver the message, what one wants to get over the, uh, to the other, and it um, it's, it uh, has to be an, um, you want one has to be an artist to this really. So if you are not a qualified or not a, a mother like personality, you won't be able to do that. Best and, to get if something is best to just leave the situation. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's a must. Yes. Thank you, Martha. It's not easy, but that, that's the one way to defuel the wrongdoings. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Radha Vinodhini Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to, uh, to you. Um, mentioned previously that there, there, are, uh, there is a, a gross form of envy and also a subtle form of it. And uh, could you elaborate it a little bit because I've never heard anything like this before. What do you mean? Elaborate on what? Uh, what, what actually is the difference between gross and subtle uh, form of envy? Yeah, the subtle form is you, you just become unhappy and angry, but you you uh, and you and you you push it in towards yourself. That's all. Oh, I you see. Lament. Mm -hmm. When it grows, form usually takes the form of uh, uh, doing something towards the object that you envy. Either saying something or acting in a way to express that enviousness or making a plan to do something to 
destroy that person or to make that person look bad. See, thank you very much. It, um, I, I was just uh, curious because uh, I had this uh, um, experience that sometimes we don't even notice uh, when we are envy. Others may notice it, but not ourselves. And uh, it's, it's very difficult because uh, you mentioned what we can do when we, we notice that uh, we are envious of someone. But uh, I don't know what, what can I do when I don't even notice uh, this, this <laughs> myself. <laughs> well, you can ask other people, did you notice anything in me that shouldn't be there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, uh, when, when the mood is, is bad, I, I notice, but uh, sometimes, for example, when, when we start to criticize, uh, we just get so much carried away that, uh, yeah, later on, I, I realize that, oh my God, I shouldn't have done this. But, uh, but in the heat of the moment, it's, uh, it's difficult to, to realize. So, yeah, as long as you... If you catch yourself, then you can see, you just see what is the cause. But satisfaction in, ex in expressing our gratitude for Krishna for whatever he's given us and, where, and how he is, whatever Krishna is in relationship to us and whatever we have in that, based on that relationship, we should appreciate that. A person who's envious is never happy <laughs> because they can't see what they have. They're always looking out towards what they don't have or what other people have. You know? Yes, thank you very much. It's this, very useful. The example was, uh, you can see how Ravana, he had so much, but still he wanted more. He wanted something he should have never had desired, you know, the wife of another man. And because of that, caused him his demise. Ravana had so much, and everybody was instructing Ravana, hey, Ravana, you know, you got, you know, you so many ladies, you have, you're a powerful king, you have so many armies, city was made of gold, he was, you know, he had loyalty, everything. But because he was envious of Ram and lusty towards Ram's wife, destroyed everything. Some, sometimes, <clears throat> so it seems that the mind, mind can never be satisfied, actually, so... Uh, yeah. We can be satisfied by chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's the greatest medicine. And sometimes when that doesn't work, just take prashad. <laughs> <laughs> or listen to a kirtan. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Just see, you have to shut the mind down, that's all. Just tell it to shut up. Sometimes during Japa period, we find our mind is just trying to interfering with our Japa all the time. Just tell them, you know, go away, come back later when, I, when I'm done with my rounds. Just shut up. You know, sometimes we have to even get a little heavy with the mind. But if you allow the mind to come in and, and do its own thing, and then every moment it's in there, it gets stronger. And that's why negativity, as soon as it appears in the mind, should be immediately crushed, immediately. Because every second it remains, it, it gets stronger. Well, I'll give you an example that is somewhat, un somewhat related to what we're saying, but somewhat unrelated also, is that there are people in the world who are they are, they want to remove evil from the world. 
So they learn about evil and they try to fight against evil, but they're, they're absorbed in evil all the time, finding out where it is and trying to destroy it. They actually start to develop some of the tendencies of that, that, that same, uh, the same qualities <clears throat> because they're in association with that negativity and that evil, and it actually comes into their psyche. Well, the best thing is always keep your mind in Krishna consciousness. Or at least in the mode of goodness. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Don't get on Thank a white horse and try to, Don't try to get on a white horse and try to solve all the problems. <laughs> Uh, is it some key kind always of stay always stay Krishna consciousness is always positive just stay in that mood thank you very much Hare Krishna. <laughs> Manisha, Manisha. it's not artificial Sorry, yeah it's not artificial it's either to be in that mood all the time any other questions yeah, Manisha Mataji has raised his uh, her hand. Uh, so, okay. Manisha. Hare Krishna, Sri Guru Maharaj, Dhanavat Pranam, Lord Pranam, obeisances to all the devotees. Um, Guru Maharaj, my question is that um, in like a, you know, the Lord's pastimes, you know, it, they're, they're so emotional. Like it's like a emotional roller coaster, you know, when you're, reading and or listening and for some of the parts in the ramayan uh, for me it's very hard to uh read or get through those parts you know and uh, other parts i relish uh, so much but some parts are hard for me so i don't know if my question is inappropriate or maybe unanswerable if it is please ignore it and forgive me but i wanted to know that in the ramayan in particular what is your favorite part <laughs> what is my favorite part <laughs> well hmm there's a lot of outstanding things in the Ramayana that really, ah, I like when Hanuman is destroying the city of Lanka. <laughs> when uh, Hanuman is just after he's, after they sell his tail on fire, how he just goes around and, and in Kumbi's Ramayana, which is put out by Subhas Vilas in his version of the Ramayana, it's in detail of what what Hanuman did after. It's really in detail. It's just like exciting. So I like that whole section where Hanuman crosses the ocean and sneaks into Lanka, finds Sita, then gets captured purposely to find out more about Ravana, and then gets released with his tail on fire, and then takes the whole city after he actually destroyed half the city. And then what he, well, I like what he said just before he left, he stood on the wall of the city. He said, you know, I'm just one of many of the, in, in the army of Ram, what I've done is insignificant. Wait till Ram comes, he will finish your whole city. <laughs> so <laughs> he gave a farewell address to to uh, I think the residents of Ayodhya, uh, of Lanka. So that was, um, I like that. I like the fighting parts in the Ramayan. <laughs> and you know what, Guru, Shri Guru Maharaj, those are the parts that are the hardest for me. I don't look forward to those parts, the fighting parts. <laughs> well, maybe, uh, you can ask your mother. She's maybe more than that mood. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no? 
she might like it. <laughs> no, actually, I find like, uh, you know, in there, of course, in the past time, the Lord's the numerous past times, there is something for everyone, you know, so like, uh, sometimes, uh, like a uh, man are more a little bit aggressive, they like to watch kind of like a action movies fighting kind of things you know so uh they enjoy like the war part fighting part and uh for me like uh, i you know for my personal bhav like i really enjoy uh in all the past lord's pastimes like uh, whether it's a uh, sri chaitanya mahaprabhu or uh, 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 sri krishna lord ram uh, the birth pastimes i love those pastimes uh you know Lord's uh, Leela's when he is a little toddler, you know, and those kind of things. I really love those pastimes more. It's interesting because I also have that. When I went to Ayodhya in 1999, there was a, there was a little place nearby and it had, uh, it was a temple of Ram and there was a deity called Balram there, Bal, little Ram. And they had all the t all little toys all over the place, and I could still remember this Didi. And then you had they had a ball and some other. I only remember is the ball <laughs> and some of the other toys. And so um, after that, I kept kept chanting Balram instead of you know Lama. I was chanting Balram, so I like I like that. That's also a, uh, an attraction for me. Krishna's pastimes. I like Krishna's pastimes when he was a baby, and young, and I also like Ram's pastimes, which are not so much. But if you read Kumbi's Marayan or Subha Vilasa's Marayan, he describes Ram growing up. And it's, there's a lot in there about when he was growing up as a young boy, before he was the age of 16. So yeah, that's the, that's sweet. That's very nice. So there's the sweet side there. Also, Sri Guru Maharaji, I uh, have so much uh, uh, unboundless respect for Mother Kekai. I admire her so much because uh, you know, I know like um, to love the Lord, it's like a, a part, a huge part of love is sacrifice and not wanting anything for ourselves, but wanting everything for the object of our affection, which in Mother KK's uh, uh, character is only Lord Ram. She, uh, from the birth, she loved Lord Ram the most out of all the mothers and lord ram also held her in like a most loving affection and as a child she was the one out of everyone who said that yes i will be the one to banish you to the forest i will be the one to take the blame for eternal time so even today, like uh, everyone says bad about Mother KK, everyone blames her, everyone hates her. Nobody will ever name their child KK. And I think that is the, one of the <laughs> biggest, yeah, one of the biggest sacrifice that she took in the name of love for her Lord to take that blame and play that role in this uh, Leela, you know, because somebody yeah. had to banish him, right? Yeah, that's the yeah, that's the internal mood. But when Ram returned from the forest, Kaikeya was also there, and uh, Ram also greeted Kaikeya. And so that that feeling of that, that natural love was again rekindled when the Lord came back. He forgave her, and uh, you know everything was back to normal again when the Lord took the throne after fourteen years. So people don't talk about that so much, but they only see her as the, we, we don't look, we don't blame the Kaikei so much. We see more of Mantara was the, was the uh, 
personality that nobody likes is Mantara. <laughs> Mantara is Mantara was also playing her role because from the high, from the from the point of, of Leela, it was meant to happen. So Ram could uh, so that Ram could could destroy uh, Ravana, which was the the reasons why the demigods wanted the Lord to descend. So on a higher level, yeah, but on another level, we can learn also these different points that can help us develop good qualities and avoid uh, bad qualities. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sri Guru Maharaj, I remember one time, uh, Lord, uh, you know, Lakshman Anantadev, he was very angry and almost a bad mouth, the mother KK, and Lord Ram stopped him right away. He said that, do not blame mother KK, you know, she is a spotless, she's, you know, only playing her part, you know, in all this. Yeah, yeah, Ram understood everything. He never had any ill feelings towards anyone. And then later, uh, he also told, uh, you know, uh, Brother Bharat to forgive his mother. Yeah, which he did. Mm -hmm. At the end, everything worked out nicely. Mm -hmm. I'll get into some of these other parts of the pastimes in the up and coming days leading to the Lord's appearance. So we'll uh, discuss more of the Ramayan then. Thank you so much, Sri Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay, so uh, Lavanya. Yes, Guru Maharaj. We, are, so we, we can close now? Yes, Guru Maharaj. I think Sri Devi Mataji has a question. Uh, can she ask, Guru Maharaj? Mm. Well, it's getting really late, but yeah, go ahead. Quickly, Sri Devi. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I can ask this tomorrow, no problem. Okay, we'll, we'll catch you tomorrow. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank okay, you. thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gaur Pramanandi Hari Hari Thank you. Thank you very much.